Today I'm going to show you how to cook these. What are these? Beef shanks. And these are all of my ingredients that I need to make a good slow cooked beef shank. Right here I have a mirepoix. Mirepoix usually consists of celery, onions, and carrots. My mirepoix consists of celery, onions, carrots, green bell pepper, and garlic. I have a 3 fourths cup of red wine, whatever red wine you want to use if it's cooking wine or your old stale wine that you have in the cabinet somewhere. I have a half a cup of soy sauce right here. I know that sounds a little strange, but trust me, it works. It makes the flavor good and you don't have to put as much salt in your beef shanks. Then I have whisker sear sauce. Whiskershire sauce. <laughs> I have beef, beef broth back here. Um, you don't have to use a specific brand, but I use this one. Um, I have gar onion powder, garlic powder, red pepper, salt and pepper, tomato paste, crushed tomatoes, and my beef shanks. My beef shanks are just seasoned with these five seasonings. Again, onion powder, garlic powder, red pepper, salt, and pepper. And now I'm going to show you how I put all of this together. And once you put this in the oven, you want to put it in a 250 degree oven. You can also do 200 and let it cook for about, um, I would say four to six hours, depending on how your oven works. And you can leave it and let it go. So now let's get to combining these ingredients. All right, let's combine this. You want to take your mirepoix. And you want to put it in your container. You have a big roasting pan. I know this looks like a lot of seasoning, but trust me, the flavor is going to be just amazing. Okay, get all of that out of there. Then you take and pour in your 3 4 cup of red wine. Your half a cup of soy sauce. Now, if you would like more soy sauce because you like your food saltier, that's up to you. I don't like my food super salty. I like to taste the flavor rather than salt. Now, we're going to add a few tablespoons of whisker sear sauce. Um, you could just eyeball it. That was about three tablespoons. Okay, now you want to add in your crushed tomatoes. I freeze mine after I use it so it can still be usable. And you can use about all of this container actually. <laughs> all right. And we're going to take and put in about three, two or three tablespoons of tomato paste. It just gives it a richer flavor. And just Makes it bolder. Yes, I'm gonna do about three. Uh oh. I'm gonna kind of whisk that in there to get all of the tomato paste out of there. Alrighty. Now, you can take a whisk if you have one ready and whisk all of this together just to kind of evenly proportion and separate everything. All right, that looks good. And I know this is like a gravy already. So you want to add in about a cup of water. The reason why um, is because your beef shanks is going to make their own water and the cup of water adds um, is because of the beef broth and it's going to add extra flavor and help tenderize as it cooks really really slow So not too much water and You're going to take your nice big beef shanks Which are beautiful. I have four Huge ones in there going to cook down really good I'm just going to place them in here Thank you. 
you know what I forgot to do <laughs> was put the beef broth in but that's okay I can always spoon it in um, as I go along so because I put a cup of water Because I put a cup of water into the broth already, I'm just gonna do a tablespoon of beef broth. And as it cooks, everything's gonna reduce. Just put it in different spots and then I'll take the whisk and stir it. It's gonna reduce and become thick and very bold and robust. And if you need more salt, you need more seasoning, to your taste, that's how you season it, you put in more. And right now, this is what it looks like. So follow me to the oven, and we're gonna put this in the oven. I separated mm -hmm. my racks so that it would be a big enough space, and you always wanna remember to cover this. So let me go get the cover. You put your top over it because it traps in the steam and it allows your meat to get tender like even more and it also helps to not dry out your meat and your sauce. So here we go. So it's at 250. I'll let that sit for about four to six hours and once it's done i'll come back and show you guys the finished result here right. is the finished product for the last hour i did take and take the top off so that it can cook and reduce a little bit more and it's nice and tender let me prove it to you guys it's really really tender see how easy that came off four hours four hours of non-stop cooking letting it sit in the oven and like I said the last hour I took the top off so that it can really cook down and I'll come back to you guys with it plated yum